Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean bent. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. <laughs> but I, but I'm not shaped for sportive trips, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I that am curtailed of this fair proportion cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I ought by them. Why, I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time. No, unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on my own deformity. Therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasure of these days. Why, I can smile. Ooh. And murder whilst I smile? Wet my cheeks with artificial tears and frame my face to all occasions. I can add colours to the chameleon and teach the murderous Machiavel to school. Can I do this and cannot get a crown? Were it further off, I'd pluck it down. So, plots have I named to set my brothers Clarence and the King in deadly hate the one against the other. And, if I fail not in my deep intent, Clarence hath not another day to live. And since the King is sickly, weak and melancholy, he cannot live, I hope, and must not die till Clarence be packed with post horse up to heaven. Which done? God take King Edward to his mercy and leave the world for me to bustle in.